Wow. In the words of Onye Cohen, don't know what I lost. Don't know what I found. Don't know anything anymore. Someone show me the way. Tell me it's going to be all right. It is going to be all right, but it doesn't soften the pain. This woman is everything it takes to say you have a gem. We lost a gem. so much controversy from my last episode where I talked harshly about two people who just passed away. May their souls rest in peace. This time I come to celebrate a hero, a lady who had the connections, she had the charm, she had the wit, and she had the intelligence, but she chose to walk on the right side of history. She chose to be a social activist for the downtrodden. I'm gonna show you a documentary she did 40 years ago. That documentary resonates today. Come with me as we look at the life of a beautiful woman, a woman of style, a woman of class, a woman of grace, Onyeka Onwenu. In the early hours of December 21st, 1983, a well-organized military coup under the leadership of Major General Buhari took place in Nigeria. My name is Onyeka Onwenu. A few weeks before the coup, the BBC and Nigerian television asked me to report as a Nigerian television journalist on the situation in my country. Recently, like many Nigerians, I've felt frustrated and saddened by what has happened to us. We've had our independence for more than 20 years. By third world standards, we have a well-educated elite. We had a productive farming economy. We have minerals. And we discovered a few years ago that we had oil, a lot of oil. Yet today we are importing food that we should be growing. We are a bankrupt nation and we have an international reputation for large-scale corruption. Many of our people are unhappy and some even hungry. What has gone wrong? This is what I set out to explore. We sensed that change had to come to our nation, that our people wouldn't continue to accept the inefficient, corrupt civilian government of President Shagari. We were right. Before this film was completed, the coup took place. So our report, instead of being a prophecy, is now an explanation. An explanation as to why the majority of my people, most of whom know what democracy is about, and want it ultimately, welcomed yet another military takeover. I'm not a politician. I'm not an economist. The story I have to tell is a personal one about my hopes and fears. 
for my country. Those hopes and fears that Onye Kongwen had 40 years ago, 40 years later, remain the hopes and fears that remain in Nigeria as she took her last breath and exited this world and exited Nigeria, the country she loved so much. Hello, everybody. Once again, this is Fred Wonko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on Allen TV. And as usual, I like to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on where you are around the world. All through this episode, I'm going to continue to bring you mainly segments of that BBC report that Onye Kongwenu did 40 years ago. The reason is that it helps you really understand the elegance of this woman, the dreams of this woman, how much this woman loved her country, Nigeria, not her Igbo people, her country, Nigeria. You see that elegance of an Adama Ziadaro. And now, she's gone. And my question is, what kind of funeral are we going to give on Yekongwen? I know it's not going to be an ordinary funeral, but that's not the point. The point I'm making is that we spend so much time on vanity. Here is a woman who really spent her life serving humanity. Here is a woman who spent her life serving Nigeria, serving Igbos, and holding up the pride in Igbos, and not falling into that trap of the stereotype that has become of Igbos. One story at this point about Onye, Onye Kowen. I have a customer, a client in Chicago, an African-American doctor who I met about 30, 35 years ago. When he found out I was Nigerian, the first question he asked me was, do you know Onye Kongweno? And I said, I did. He said, Onye Kongweno is the most beautiful, most elegant woman I've ever known. If you ever see her, tell her that Robert Earls said hi. That's the kind of ambassador Apart from journalism, I'm a singer, and I suppose this more than anything is my way of communicating my feelings. I write my own songs. This one, we're rehearsing, is both a love song and a song about my country. I've sometimes thought of leaving Nigeria, yet every time I'm away, I miss it. Now, coming home though is one thing, feeling at home is another. Today in Nigeria, divisions are increasingly on the basis of class, between those who have and those who have not. But there's no escaping the fact that there's still deep tribal tensions in our country. It's something we don't like to admit, according to Nigeria's greatest novelist, Chinu Atebe. Although my work requires me to live in Lagos, this is my real home, Arondizog, my little corner of the world. <laughs> Part of me will always remain here. These are my people. My life is linked with theirs. It gives me a sense of security to know that I'm always welcome here. A great many people have jobs that they cannot do. They don't even begin to understand them. They are in those jobs because they happen to come from a particular part of the country. It's a good thing to have geographical spread and have representation, but it is not helpful to the country. But as people, you know, concerned, if they can't perform. The people in this country now realizes that 
our leaders only fight for their pockets, not to the, I mean, to the welfare of the poor masses. Before making this film, I felt like moving to some other African country. I don't feel that way now. For the moment, at least, there's a, there's a sense of hope in Nigeria. How long that would last, I don't know. This country, like the rest of Africa, only so recently in charge of its own affairs, is still finding its way. It's easy to forget that we're trying to do, in a matter of decades, what it took the Western world centuries to do. Well, perhaps at the moment we're not doing it so well, but at least we're doing it ourselves. And as you can see, not without the ability to recognize some of our shortcomings. The fact that this film was made at all says something for Nigeria. Perhaps it may have seemed too critical in its assessment. But when I go down to Bar Beach, the one place in Lagos where the rich and poor alike mix and come together, and I talk with people, I know many Nigerians share my feelings. Feelings of, of confusion and uncertainty about the way things have turned out since our independence. Ultimately, it is democracy, our sort of democracy perhaps, that we want. And that that is what we'll demand. We're a very persistent, argumentative and determined people, and we'll get it one way or another. Then perhaps my song, our song, will be a happier one than the one I sing now. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Onye Konweno is coming back to her Lord. Or should I say going back to her Lord? That's what the life of a role model should be like. When it's all said and done, you could do much more for the people, never giving them a penny out of your pocket. But the words you speak, the examples you set, the way you carry yourself, and the things you teach. That's where wealth is. Onye Kongwenu was a very wealthy Nigerian. Nigeria is a better place because Onye Kongwenu lived in it. Igbos are better people because they can claim Onye Kongwenu as one of theirs, as an arrow man from Anambra State, I am a better person because my arrow sister, Onyek Omenu, shared her wisdom with Nigeria. May Onyek Omenu so rest in peace and may a so called Igbo elite. Take some lessons from the words they will hear Nigerians of all social level say about Onye Konweno in the coming days. 
That's what heroism is all about. When you have Cowan who did not spray Naira all over the place, she didn't have that much Naira to keep spraying. But every step she took, every word she said, every song she sang, and every movie she acted in, the class she showed resonated with Nigerians. And a lot of young people have become productive, responsible, morally and ethically solid Nigerians because they saw the values that Onye Kawano demonstrated. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Fred Wonko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with a painful edition this time of Bull Talk on Allen TV. And until next time, good night and God bless. <laughs>